Hey guys, Luke Warm Mining here. So I had a couple people reach out and give um, their ideas on things they would like to see added to like the PB Farmer firmware, or maybe um, wanted to know if there was ways to hook into it. Uh, other people were like, hey, I have issues sometimes when I'm trying to access the web UI and certain pages won't load. Is there ways to send commands? And the answer is yes. So I went and um, jumped into the API that he provides with the PB Farmer firmware for how to send data and receive data from um, the uh, web UI and web service that's running on it. Um, I wanted to kind of go over that. So for my example, what I was trying to do, turns out there's actually a bug potentially with my miner. We're looking into seeing what's causing it. But for example, I have really high time of use power cost. So when I first moved to where I was, it was around 15 cents a kilowatt, which isn't great. Um, you know, because the average is 10% and below for them or 10 cents and below. Here is 15 cents, but I mean, it is what it is. Then over time, there's been all kinds of updates that it did to the infrastructure out here. Um, companies, you know, things exchanged hands and stuff like that. And so now we sit around 20 to 23 cents per kilowatt. It's crazy, but that's not even the craziest part. We all have to be on time of use plans now in order to keep our rates low. And so on time of use between 5 p.m. and 9 p.m., my electrical costs can go anywhere from 54 to 60 cents per kilowatt. So the best thing for me to do is to shut off my miners during that period of time. And I know I'm not profitable really at 23 cents. There's not a single thing I could do in the world that would make it profitable to mine on any device at 60 cents per kilowatt. So during that period of time, I either have to run out there and turn off on the devices, access the web UIs and tell them to go to sleep or have to go buy those like 20, 30, $40, um, you know, wall plugs to basically use Z-Wave and turn them off. Um, and that's a pain in the ass. Whereas setting up a script and being able to just shut them on and off whenever is fantastic. So um, that was something I set out to do, but then um, pouring through the API, found out there's a lot more we can do. I mean, we can just go roll through the page really quick on here. Um, I'll click on the link and go to, to see the formatting of it. But like we can do something basic. We can get like an overview, which sends all the data about the miner period, the pools it's connected to, hash rate, temperatures, anything you could ever want. It will dump all this information on you um, if you just pulled it um, for the overview. API machine, there is so much that you can do with it. So like you can reboot it, you can shut it down, you can sleep it, you can wait it, you can reset it, do a factory reset with the command. Um, you can ping it um, so you can do a health check. You can make it so that the LED starts flickering on it. Um, you, so on these ones they have, um, he has it where you can have user accounts. So different people can have different logins and passwords that have different levels of access. Um, you can list it obviously, we'll, we'll scroll down to some of the other stuff that I like. So he has always these update commands on them. So for example, um, we're gonna scroll down a little bit here. Um, so pools, so say for example, you wanna be able to switch pools and stuff like that. Maybe you set up a script that looks and sees that the network hash rate is changing a lot or watches the payout on some other API or something like that um, and calculates over there. And hey, if it gets profitable, you could set up a script to switch it and switch pools whenever you want. Um, same with clock. Someone was like, it would be so awesome if you could auto overclock these devices. And there's a lot of reasons why that's really, really bad and really stupid. Not in the sense that you're, you're stupid for making one, but um, <clears throat> the wattage pull based off of what your clock speed is gonna be based off the clock speed in millivolt input so um unless you knew what the wattage was and were feeding in the wattage somehow into it which this device does not know its wattage and does not know any of that information um there's not really a way to stop it from just continuously clocking up and adding voltage until it crashes out though with the ksr ultra maybe you know hey i want to start at this millivolt and just let it keep creeping the clock up every 30 minutes or so they get a really good average so that you don't have to sit there and pay attention and eventually it will just max out or whatever it is for that so maybe that's a way to do it anyways that's just some examples of the things that you can do with this um and because it's just an api you can tie it into anything you want so um first things first what you're going to need to do in order to access this api and use it properly is to go yes you do need to go into your ice river miner and you have to go grab the api token so if you go under the tab for account the token is there and the ID is there. Um, please, please, please. I have not done it yet intentionally so you guys can see it, 
This is the default API token. Everyone has this API token. What does that mean? Anyone with this token can have access to your miner. Um, if it's you know attached to the internet in any sense um, or way, if it's exposed at all, this is a, potentially a way that you could go in and, and wreak some havoc with it because you do have full access, at least with the permissions on this one. But maybe that's something you do. Maybe you intentionally make API tokens that don't have full access to everything that you want to change. So maybe it just has, you give the API token only access to be able to, um, you know, switch pools or something like that, or switch um, or adjust fan curves or voltage or whatever like that. So if someone tried to ingress through that, if you're using like an external website or something like that to do it, um, then there's no way to do it. Anyway, so you need to keep this API token um, just so you know, because um, you're going to have to use it to send it and to do the commands. Speaking of commands, I have a couple of them that I have um, thrown up on the screen here. Um, they're pretty simple and they do some pretty simple things. So uh, first things first, um, it's going to be the same command on Windows and Linux. It's a little bit harder to set up scheduled tasks with Windows. You can technically have like a Linux operating system running within it and you can use um, uh, Kronos or Krona. I don't remember what the, the command is because I'm a little bit new to running Linux. But you can schedule tasks through that in Linux and it's stupid easy to do it. Um, I did it on a VM and it was running fine. It was able to adjust the minor. But anyways, so we're going to use curl to connect to it through HTTPS. Um, here's those ties, K and H. Don't ask me what they mean. And this right here is the um, first part of it that's important. Um, this authorization bearer. Then you're after that, you're going to put in your API key. Then after that, um, you're going to do a space and then you're going to do whatever API you're trying to reach out to. So the IP of your miner, whether that so this is just my local IP, um, you're going to connect to the, the local IP API and then whatever you're doing. So remember how I showed on that little um, API over here, um, you have these um, right here. Those are what you're going to type in for the section that you want to take advantage of. So um, sorry, real quick. Um, so on this one, I'm changing my pool. Um, and so you can see I'm communicating over to the pool and then it's in web or URL encoded is what I believe it's called. So you'll see all these ID five and an and pool address, and you'll see all these, um, little, little markers like this. This is how we're doing those special characters. Um, so you can see right here, percent time is saying, Hey, it's a special character three a. So that's your um, colon then slash slash. Um, so there are websites you can do for this. You can also just look at the examples he provided um, and adjust from there. So what this is gonna do is go ahead and switch um, and update the pool for ID number five. So we can actually go over to the miner and intentionally change that real quick, just so you guys can see that. So I will change the miner's name to a zero underscore one. And just hit save on this end just so you guys can watch this happen in real time. Um, go over to the notepad real quick. We're gonna copy this down. Oh, and I forgot to mention, so anytime you're passing data using curl, um, you need to do this flag for D for data. So this is data that it's requesting. Uh, obviously we have to have a data input in order to change and update a pool. We have to put the D tag on there. So we're gonna go ahead and copy this line right here. Go over terminal, uh, paste it anyways. Um, why is it mad? It didn't actually paste correctly. Oops, I am dumb. Um, man, I thought that was just gonna work. Oh, it's cause it should be all one line though. Why is it not showing up as one line? That's really weird. Oopsies. Thank you Windows for doing really stupid stuff with my line of Code. Anyways, um, we'll do that again. Sorry, guys. So we do this right. So we go ahead and paste this in there. Press go. And error message zero. No message after that means it worked. So we're gonna go over to the um, tab real quick. We'll hit a quick uh, F5. Go over to minor. And look, it says test now. So that works. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, the next command that we have here, we can change uh, this one would shut down the machine. So maybe we don't run that one yet. Let's do the one where we set the offset um, differently. So this one I just typed up. I have no idea if it's going to work. We're about to watch if this works in real time. So it's at 195 currently. Same thing. We just go over here, paste it. There's our API. Everything's there. If we hit there, error zero. If we refresh, should say 180 there now. Look at that. So it's instantaneous. As long as you get the error message zero, it means it communicated and that's good to go. Um, any other errors, um, it will output it out. So I was really dumb. I wrote pools instead of pool earlier on it. Um, and what that was doing was uh, giving an error message. So let's do it intentionally actually. So if we put the wrong thing on there, resource not found. So that means that, hey, you type something wrong in on the API key. Um, if you forget to provide data, um, missing clock offset curls here, bad host name, um, that's a little bit different, but the missing clock offset thing is because we didn't put this data in front of it and now it's good. So, alrighty. Now it's integrating this into doing something like on Linux or something like that. You can attach it into any of those kind of scheduling services and set up that way. Um, you can also use this um, just to pull data. So I've been writing data this whole time. So let's do API, um, I think it was machine overview. Oops, hold on. See, and then we can just refer back to here. Oh, my bad, so API overview. And this will tell you everything about the machine. It takes a little bit and look, look, it just dumps everything. Now, granted, everything is <laughs> separated by um, by uh, commas and stuff like that. So you can get more specific into it and uh, look into each object for the things that you need and pull data from. So you can be a little bit more um, fine with the data um, rather than just dumping everything. But just want to show you guys you can this is the data dump of everything that's on there versions uptime how long it's been the mac address the ip address what it's what it's hashing like um you know this the, everything the fan states the fans are working stuff like that so you could also integrate this in as like a fail safe system so hey if like the fans are at a hundred percent and the machine's not cooling down and the mosfets are over 125 degrees and um, you know, it's been that way for two minutes or three minutes. Just go ahead and run um, shutdown and shut down the whole machine or tell it to go to sleep, which completely clock down clocks of um, the uh, sorry, the ASIC. Um, and I think it actually cuts off voltage on it and essentially cuts it into the lowest power state where the only thing running is the uh, SOC that's running all this stuff on the back end. So anyways. I just want to give you guys kind of a brief glimpse into basically everything you can do with it. Like we just touched the surface when it comes to just changing the clocks on the web UI and stuff like that. This is all stuff that he's put in the back end that is there for his web service and stuff. But as everyone has access to this, anyone can do anything they want with it. He doesn't believe in locking things around corners and stuff like that. Everything. If you want to do anything, here's basically the reins. Do whatever you want with it. Come with, with cool ideas. I kind of want to see what you guys end up doing with it. Um, maybe publish it on GitHub or something like that if someone you know, maybe wants it. Like I said, like maybe the auto overclocking thing with a set millivolt um, where basically it just pumps up the clocks until it you know sees a lot of instability in it. Um, or something that auto switches pools for you um, just so that, you know, as much as we want to say we don't chase things for profit and how that's been proved that sticking with the coin is probably your best bet and not switching all the time is you know, good. Maybe that's something someone integrates. Um, it'd be pretty awesome. Anyways, uh, let me know down in the comments. Feel free to like um, and subscribe. Um, hit me up over on Discord. I'm usually there all the time. Um, and let me know what you guys also want to see. All right. Take care.